This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Hey, it is the awesome cast, 321 Awesome. Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in Pittsburgh, PA, in the Mayhem Studios, ready to talk tech, get geeky with all of you. And with me, straight out of Studio C in Dormont, PA, right down the road, really, is John Tachilla. <laughs> three, two, one, go. Yeah, I'm get- liking that. I'm liking the episode 321 so far. Yes, three, two, one, chilla. <laughs> uh, Chillatech.net, Gadget Guru for Big uh, big Bank, j- doing business as. Uh, <laughs> how are you doing today? Pretty good. How are you this this fine Tuesday evening? It's getting dark rather early. I have to turn on the lights much, oh, much earlier I in the love show it. anymore. I just edited a show from this past week in the, in the gymnasium, and during the summer, I get the sun for the first half of the show, so the lighting is all messed up for my shots, and I have to try to go in and adjust it in post. It, it, I was I was so happy. I was like, yes, it's dark. I'm good for the next like six months on these things. So, Anyways, this is the Awesome Cast. You can check us out at awesomecast.net. You can uh, subscribe to the show, uh, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Facebook, or the YouTube. Uh, those ones are video versions. Uh, please uh, rate us, share us, all the kinds of things. Uh, check us out on social media at AwesomeCast on the Twitter, or of course, like I said, Facebook, all your Facebook means. Also, there's an awesome cast group that you can join where we're posting a lot of the articles through the week. You guys can discuss some stuff with us if you would like uh, and uh, and join us on the conversation there. Or like I said, over on the Twitter as well. And we're here at live.awesomecast.net every Tuesday night. Also, uh, now streaming on the Facebook page. So you can join us on there as well. Uh, you, uh, if you subscribe to our live notifications, you should be able to uh, uh, get a notification when we do go live here at 7 p.m. Eastern Time every Tuesday night. You can also uh, check out our rebroadcast Thursday mornings, 8 a.m. after Funny Money at Rivers Edge PGH. Dot com and thanks to our Patreon supporters, patreon.com slash awesomecast, our good friend Mike Fedor at Mike Fedor Show on the Twitters at the dollar level. Thank you so much. He's been supporting us for a good long time. Chilla, it's time for the awesome things. And uh I the awesome things. Should we go gadget? You want to go gadget or experience first? Go go gadget first, because I'll I will do experience. All right, go next. go gadget. Sorg, I got some new hotness on my wrist right here. Look at that. Ooh. Look at that right there. That is the Pebble 2. Technically, apparently a Pebble 2 plus heart rate. And I am digging it. Of course, um, um, I've been using from one Kickstarter Pebble to another because I, I, I inherited your original OG Kickstarter red Pebble <laughs> I've been wearing for ages now. Um, and and I can, now you're gonna be flying stealth with that black one. Hell yeah, yeah. It actually like like it's not it, it it's not quite as big as the other one. It doesn't stick out as much. I don't have to worry about like it just just popping out as 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 much as the other one was. Even the white one that we had um, just seemed large and like a giant Lego toy on my wrist. Uh, th- this feels like I have like a Casio rock watch, and it, it's real felt real like I hardly notice it's there. Um, Again, it's got everything that I love from uh, it, it really brought in uh, you know everything that I had before. Even the BB-8 um, the, the BB-8 watch face that I had been using uh, has been updated with all of the uh, health stuff that's been added to this. So uh, I, I do have how much how much sleep I got. I have how much I've walked for the day, my current heartbeat, and uh, it lets me in on that. And I actually get health reports now of how I've been sleeping, how much I did walk. Uh, if you uh, press up on it, uh, down is the calendar usually, but if you press up, I just got some, oh, my Slack just hit me up too. Um, but if you press up, you actually get your, uh, yeah, I haven't been doing it long enough to get what my typical Tuesdays are like, but it's letting me know how much I walked and what my typical is, what my heartbeat is now. Um, you can go into workout modes with it. I believe this is like waterproof, like I think even swim proof. Uh, to a point, if if I remember them, I don't know. It kind of gels with whatever they were saying about the new Apple Watch. Uh, so yeah, it's good to go. I I 
I, I don't know. I've just been using it as usual. Um, I, getting used to wearing it while I sleep and putting it into night mode. Again, super easy. Just uh, clicking on the back button puts you into quiet mode. And there's a little guy there. There's a little there's a little mouse that's uh, stinking out uh, when he's doing that. Or even like if a notification pops up because I forgot, like uh, go into quiet mode. Quiet time, it's called, um, pops right in there. It's super fast. It's um, it, And again, most of the apps uh, carry over. So it, it, it seems like a really nice upgrade so far. I've had it since Friday. It's now Tuesday at this recording. I do have an unboxing uh, over on the uh, Facebook page. I did a quick live on that. Do you know that? So, so I, I've actually recently joined Weight Watchers. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I really like about the Apple Watch is the Weight Watchers app can read out of HealthKit. So I can get my workout points and walking points. I can't remember what, what they call them, but I can get those points because that app can read out of HealthKit. And right. since my watch goes into HealthKit, right. do you know, does it write your steps and stuff like that into the health app? Yes, on yes, it does. Phone? You get, you, awesome. you get a notification actually on my sleep for the week because I was wondering how I was keeping sleep when I was just I was basically just using the iPhone as my stepometer for the longest time because okay. um, I, I didn't have anything that had anything like that. I haven't had a Fitbit, had anything like that. And uh, so I was like, well, how are you really checking my sleep? Are you just checking for whenever I pick up my phone off of the nightstand or, or, or how does that really work out? Uh, so, again, kind of I, I need to spend a little more, you know, have a little more bit more time with it um, so that. I'm trying to find the steps yeah so resting energy really interesting steps yeah so there is yeah, definitely the last few days and i've had that since friday and it's still filled in the rest of it so it is connecting but even pebble nice. pebbles health um dashboard in the pebble app itself is pretty nice so um they always seem to pay a lot of attention to their apps on the phone and on the watch itself. So they're always rather impressive. The, the attention to detail that a lot of their developers, especially for it being kind of third party, mm -hmm. um, it's not Android where it's not um, watch OS. I, I, I'm always really impressed with all of the, the additional feature functionality when you compare the Pebble to something like a, a Fitbit, um, all the all the extra cool bells and whistles and and fun stuff that you really get with that device. So, I, I think there's something that there's something said to that, and I think Fitbit could learn some lessons from them when it comes to the these kinds of technologies. Mm -hmm. Kind of taking it above and beyond the just notifications or or heart rate or, or, or whatever. I, their watch faces were always cool and above and beyond the ability to kind of integrate with other information and, and bring that and surface that in the watch face. I think if, to be completely honest, I think Apple took a lesson from them on what people were looking at when, when Pebble came out with their kind of watch store and they had, you know, the faces and the applications and everything else like that. I mean, they, someone ported flappy birds to the, to the pebble i mean it's yeah. really cool what they've done with those devices yeah and this is like you can tell it's got a little more to it it, it also does a uh, uh, voice recognition uh as in you can respond to only a text message though uh not really like any of the other messages that i've seen so far uh but yeah i, I was playing with that a little bit so you can actually speak a response to a text that you receive which is kind of nice very nice uh, that, that's kind of can like, you can you activate siri with it i don't think and so then no 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 uh, I don't think okay. it passes through Siri. Maybe it's something that can do in an update. Well, if it's passing through the mic to, to dictate a te text message, I would think that But it could. I think they're using their own processing on the watch to actually do that. Okay. Like, I don't think... I don't know. I, I don't know entirely, but it, it's not... It's not coming through Siri. It's, it's Pebble's own thing. Okay. Well, okay. that's cool, though. Still. So, I have something else on me that can listen to me. You know, but you still kind of want to, you know, it, it, I, I kind of do want there to be kind of a, a command to, to pop it up, you know, to say, mm -hmm. hey, you know, hey, Pebble or something, right, uh, to pop it up. But, you know, but but again, I, I think for what it is, I mean, there's a lot of technology packed in this. There's the back, by the way, for you guys on video. 
Uh, you can see the heart rate monitor and the, and the charger is actually on back. And it seems to, I, I seem to be more assured that it's going now. So um, I haven't been able to tell battery life. I haven't really seen a drop below 50%. Although the last couple of mornings, I've been actually taking the point to throw it on the charger while I go take a shower. Mm-hmm. Since I have to take it off anyways, I guess I don't have to take it off, but I want to. Um, yeah, I get that. Yeah, I would do the same. So, 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 as far as battery life, I don't know how well it compares with the original Pebble. I'm sure I was starting to lose some battery life since that was such an old device to begin with. What's um, the What's the battery connector like? Is it still the contacts on the side and magnetic, or uh, yeah, that? yeah, no, no, on the back, on the back, right there, the back. Ac- across the top, because you see. You can see the, the the bump in the middle is actually the heart rate monitor, and uh, and the the dots across the top. So so actually your charger is going to go across the top there instead of down the side. So Very now cool. now now your side is this flush thing, which is great because there's less there, there's less for you to like get more grime into, you know, a, a, as you go and dust and and, and whatever. Um, so no, I think it, it works really good. I mean, it's not a touch screen or anything still. So so now I'm in a dilemma. Because somebody aff- offered me today their Apple Watch. <laughs> For free? Uh, we'll just say they offered me their Apple Watch. Uh, and, and, and and so I, I feel like guilty going to it now after after picking this thing up. And this was off of Kickstarter. I think I paid uh, $109 for it with shipping. And uh, it's going for $129 for the uh, Pebble 2 Plus heart rate. There is a Pebble 2 SE that wasn't part of the Kickstarter, but it looks like it is available on their website. That is basically the Pebble 2 hardware, but without the heart rate stuff. Like it still does the stepometer and everything. So, mm-hmm. so there is that little cheaper version. That's probably the one that you're gonna, uh, uh, you know, find a little cheaper. Probably, probably find it that like seventy dollar price point that the original Pebble was at eventually. Uh, but, uh, but I think that's that's it's it's really good. Uh, my cousin actually is getting the um, the Pebble Time. That's I think due in a few more months from now, so uh, I'm, I'm curious. I'm, I'm hoping hoping he'll reach out to me when he picks that up, so we can get some thoughts on that as well. So as far as this goes, again, if if you don't want to drop three hundred dollars on a watch, if you don't want this giant thing, because every time I see uh, my friend with the Android watch or or some you know some friends with the Apple watch, it seems like a lot of watch, right? Mm-hmm. And this just seems like a watch that does stuff. Like this is the first time. I think that I, I can see a smartwatch that doesn't look like a smartwatch. Like, more than what we're used to for kind of higher-end watches that, that have functionality to them, right? I mean, could you, I mean, just kind of looking at that, that doesn't really pop. And I like that. Yeah. I like that it's low profile. Um, so, so I won't have people kind of pointing out, oh, Pebble, hey, what's up, Pebble, you know? Or Chachi, yo, Pebble, from across the street. <laughs> 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 so uh i really recommend it if you you're looking for something to introduce yourself to the smartwatch world it's the pebble 2 and again there's the pebble 2 se uh for about 30 dollars cheaper um i don't know if those are available i mean they were just shipping for kickstarter so i would probably give it a little bit time before <laughs> yeah time um that's something else time steals time round um but uh, I, I, I'd say probably give it a little time. Yeah, it says it's available in November for the SE. It's saying ships in November for the Pebble 2 plus heart rate. So, so you can't get it today, but you can get it on pre-order right now. And let me see what it does for the time steal and the time round for expectations for those. Very similar updates. The, the, the round is starting at about $200, and that one is going to be available... Let's see here. Let's see, I think both of them starting at two hundred dollars. Um, actually, oh, they they don't even have the uh, Pebble Two Times posted yet. Like you can still buy the time, the original times that are are now shipping, uh, the time round and the time steal. So, um, but no Pebble Two really cool. How does how does it feel to sleep with? Don't don't even notice it. I was worried it's going to get caught on okay. stuff. Don't even notice it. it, it it's low impact enough. That yeah, I, I, it's not a problem for me. So, I mean, not as much. Like, I feel like it's w- less of a burden because my wife has the Charge HR, the Fitbit, and that mm-hmm. thing feels huge. And and I don't even know so with this. Hold on a second, but but hers like the, the green light for the heartbeat 
underneath. Like sometimes like she'll move and then it will shine in my eyes. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, I, and I don't, I don't see much of a, a light or anything like that going on. In well, here. it looks like they did a really nice job. Kind of the way the indentation is and the way that they actually kind of put that into your, into your wrist mm-hmm. the, on the, on the backside for the heart rate monitor, it looks like it would really conceal it and seal it off. Right. That's something that I did notice even on. It's like it's embedded in your skin. <laughs> yeah. It's almost like it's pushed kind of in. Mm-hmm. I, I, I noticed the blinking a lot on the, the, the first Moto 360 because it was the, the back of the device was completely flat. Mm-hmm. And I felt like, because then when it would shift around, instead of that, that area being lower and more against your skin, it kind of would kick up and you would definitely see like the green flashing from underneath. I do. I, I, I'm not, I can't remember what, how it w- looked on the Microsoft band, but I think that was a little more noticeable as well. And again, even if I were to upgrade to an Apple watch, something a little more spiffy or something like this is going to be my, my rugged go-to, you know, like this is going to be the one that the everyday watch when I'm like, okay, I'm actually going to go on mode, mode yard. You're not wearing your Apple watch when you go out to mow the lawn, right? You put this on, right? Yeah. Like the, and and I'm, I'm probably going to have to make that leap sooner than later because working around the house and in the basement and doing a lot of stuff, I, I have definitely scuffed up and the, the front of my, my Apple watch. Mm-hmm. Um, so it is definitely something. Yeah. I'm looking at. And I, I don't think I'm gonna. I don't think I'm gonna get the new Apple Watch right now. Um, but I may look at like one of these type of devices to to leverage when I don't want to be necessarily wearing the Apple Watch. Right. Exactly. Uh, so there you go. Pebble two. You guys have any questions? I mean, it's doing. Although I haven't been able to get my swarm to load because I would use. I have a shortcut for it for it to load up so I can do the check ins real quick. Like, I loaded it up when I walked in the library, and it didn't pop in. Oh, now it is. Sorgatron Media Home Base. Check in. I don't know. Maybe it was me. Maybe I walked away from my phone. I probably left it in the car. Now I think about it. It is still, I mean, it still is something that pairs with your phone for those new to these kinds of start smart watches. So um, definitely definitely something to, to think about. But it is the one that it doesn't matter what platform you're on. You know, it, it is the only one, <laughs> actually. Well, I guess the Android Watch, you, you can... I guess there is a little discrepancy on that, right? Um, yeah, you can do some stuff, but it seems like they've really Pebble's really gone the distance, even on iOS, to kind of try to integrate with a little more than just notifications. Where mm-hmm. you know they have their app, and their app can kind of be a proxy for for additional data, like gathering weather and stuff like that. So, and, and much like the Apple Watch, like it's not a giant buzz when something goes through is that it, it mm-hmm. not, not a tap, but it's like, you know, the same thing you kind of feel when you're, you know, using 3d touch and that little, like, you know, how, how it felt like around the, the six and six S like you just got little, little bumps instead of buzzes mm-hmm. with your phone. Like it, it definitely feels like that this has been upgraded with that kind of thing too. I feel but like yours, and, but, and I yours still, looks great in bright sunlight too. What's that? I said yours looks great in bright sunlight, whereas the, the other a lot of the other devices are a little harder to read because mm-hmm. you're using that nice e ink, e paper LCD. Yeah, even this is it, it uh, seems a little easier to read when I'm just peeking down because I mean the, the 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 big test for me is can I can I shoot my eyes down there while I'm driving and you know not have to really fuss with it right and mm-hmm. it's been infinitely better as far as that goes. You know, I mean, whenever you feel safe to, you know, I, I look at this on my wrist on, on the steering wheel as another dashboard instrument. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, 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 you know, we're already having our phone up doing stuff, whether it be a GPS or or, you know, maybe you're a girl lift driver or something. You know, we have all the other stuff going on. I have my automatic thing reporting things in. I mean, this is all an extension of the dashboard. This is an extension of the dashboard. Sometimes I use this as my music controls. If I, you know, the phone, you know, some certain situations when I, I can't really control stuff on the phone or maybe my in-car stereo connection isn't letting me skip tracks for some reason. So this becomes an extension of that as well. 
Yeah, I even see that with my headphones. Like if my headphones, for some weird reason, I'm not getting the, the skip or pause or whatever, I definitely reach down to my watch before reaching out so it does, or reaching into my pocket for my phone. So it does seem like a, a, a general Bluetooth. Sometimes it just doesn't get in. Or my car just decides not to like connecting to my phone. Uh, and that's great, too. Uh, but I, I'm also kind of not the primary in the car. Like my wife's phone is the primary. Ah. So, so it, it like, I, which is super frustrating for me when I'm driving around. I'm like, and I'm like, I'm like, you know, I hit the button and say Bluetooth audio collecting. Couldn't find it. You know, and, and I do this like five times in a row while I'm trying to drive away. <laughs> and it's just really, really frustrating. Um, awesome. So yeah, there you go. I think it's enough about the pedal too. Uh, hit me with any questions if you'd like. Pe- uh, Mr. Chilla. What is your awesome thing of the week? So real quick, I'm going to intro my awesome thing of the week, and then I'm going to introduction kind of the overall concept. So my awesome thing of the week is the Imaginarium Ooh. Pittsburgh. Um, it is a kind of cooperative agreement between Scarehouse and Bricolage, and it is a escape the room type experience. Um I don't know if you're familiar or, or some of the viewers are familiar with the, the escape rooms. Um, there's a lot of them in Pittsburgh, escape room, Pittsburgh, escape room, PGH trapped in the room with zombie. Um, they're, and they're, they're popping up more and more and more and more each day. Um, this one is kind of in the Harmer area. Um, it does have a Pittsburgh mailing address, but it's kind of out towards the Harmer entrance out route eight, um, onto the near the turnpike entrance. Um, so the whole concept is, and, and from the, from, like I said, I've done a bunch of these, pretty much the concept is you have an hour, they put you in a room, good luck getting out. Um, different, different ones can have, you know, different puzzles or different, um, tasks that you have to complete, uh, trapped in the room with a zombie. Obviously there, there's a zombie in there and he can, he can kind of, keep you in a confined to an area in the room or um, he can actually kind of kick you out of the game um, and you kind of become one of the, one of the dead. Um, I will honestly say after doing many of the trapped or the escape room type experiences, um, I am now officially three for four. Thanks to the Imaginarium. I did not make it out. Um, I would, I'm, I'm, I would hazard to guess if I, if we, if the team had about another five minutes, we would have made it out. Um, I can't say enough about how well the Imaginarium did with the room. Um, definitely spent some money on technology. Definitely. It's an extremely well built room. Um, and the way it's executed and the storyline that goes along with it, it's just it's just phenomenal. So if you have a chance, if you're first of all, if you're interested in doing escape rooms, I may not recommend the Imaginarium as your first because it is a little more difficult, and I don't want people to get discouraged. But if you've tried an escape room and maybe you didn't like it for a specific reason. I would give the Imaginarium the second chance because it is so well done and their execution is amazing. Amazing. Um, I'm about to pull up some images here. Uh, Bold Pittsburgh. Actually, my wife uh, uh, went to check this out along with our friends at Bold Pittsburgh. BoldPGH.com if you want to check it out. And for some reason, it keeps loading over. This is probably because I have an old Chrome browser on here. It's getting weird. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, they, they got two experiences. So I, I got a little bit of a heads up on what's going on here. And, and, and you know, it, it, the scare house has such a tremendous, uh, uh, production, uh, that goes with that. We actually got to do a lights on tour with it last weekend, uh, or two weekends ago, I guess with scare house and, and, and very excited to see this. And it's not a scary experience, right? It, it it's more of a, a theatrical experience. So I guess this is like a calmer version of what they're doing with the basement, uh, a little bit too. Uh, I, I'm not sure because I, it, or it's more the basement room. That isn't necessarily an, uh, the concept of you need to escape and no, work your no, way no, out. No. But it's more interactive, right? Like, there's more characters involved, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it, there's so you're in the room alone. Okay. Um, with your group. Um, but there is like the introduction and exit 
you you do interact with. Oh, okay. And we did the we did the um we did the one room. We didn't. We haven't. We're actually. We want to go back and do do the other experience. Mm-hmm. So they have a couple options there, and it's a, it's kind of a uh, by appointment kind of thing, right? So oh yes, and I, when we got our tickets, I mean, we had to book weeks and weeks yeah. out because it's definitely going fast. And, and this is the kind of interesting thing, and I know they talk about. I, I can't imagine. I can't. I can't recall if they talked about the Imaginarium itself. I know they talked with one of the. Uh, actresses from the basement that's involved with bricolage because they talk about these um, immersive theaters and everything. So, so they're very involved with that. So I definitely uh, check out, uh, of course, uh, Katie of, of, of this show on the Scarehouse podcast, talking about a lot of that uh, kind of thing. And I actually, I think, I think their latest one is actually the Serpentine alternate uh, reality game. It's like a film noir kind of thing. So I know they've done a lot of those down here, like like downtown and everything with bricolage. But uh, but no, I definitely definitely worthwhile. I hear great great things with this and this escape the room stuff. Yeah, it's everywhere. Like I saw ads for escape the escape the room when I was down in Nashville. Uh, so you know they, they're definitely getting out there. It's one I pass all the time when I'm taking Chaji home after the wrestling shows um, out there in uh, I think it's Garfield area, Garfield Greenfield. <laughs> Kind of I mean, that, so that escape room with the Garfield, I think that's one of the ones where you're trapped in a jail. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and I've heard very good things about that. We want to try that one next, but well, I, I feel like if you're, if you're into, I feel like you're, you're in an actual kind of live video game, like a mist type game or one of those type of kind of puzzle, puzzle scenario games. Mm-hmm. So if you're into that, this is definitely kind of the real life version, which I think is, is awesome. Awesome. Go check it out. Imaginarium. Uh, I know there's links over from... Where did I just come from? I, there's a website for it that I just found online. No, you, you linked it. Enter the Imaginarium PGH.com. There you go. They're also Enter the Imaginarium on Facebook. And I think they might be linked. They're, of course, probably linked off of Scarehouse's website as well. Also recommended to go to. Well, uh, one thing we do like our friends here, a Pittsburgh original slice on Broadway. The tracks are done. Go, you have no excuse to, but to come up here. Check out the Beachview neighborhood and check out some Slice on Broadway. Uh, for su- supplying, supplying the Pitts, perfect pepperoni pizza for Pittsburgh podcasting for a good long time. Down PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Carnegie, PA, down on Main Street. Like I said, right here on Broadway. Hence, Slice on Broadway here in Beachview. Uh, thank you so much for the Rico, to Rico and the guys for su- supporting the show with food. Here on Tuesday nights gives us one less thing that we have to worry about for us and our guests as we're trying to get this awesomeness together for the awesome cast. Check them out sliceonbroadway.com, PGH underscore slice on the Twitter, Twitter, as well as slice on Broadway on the Facebook and the Instagram. I'll let them know the awesome cast sent you because you're probably hungry by now. <laughs> I'm switching funny. it up, switching it up, right, Chilla? <laughs> We oh, I can't get enough. I can't get enough of the slice. We need to have our, you know, we, we've been doing the Sorgatron coffee, but I think we need to do a Sorgatron pizza night too every once yes. in a while. I, I don't know if I could spring for that like I do the coffee as much, but let's just have a gathering. I, I think it's fine to let let's, everyone. Let's have a gathering for their own let's pizza. Have a Sorgatron media gathering. That might be worthwhile. We'll see what what we can do about that. Alrighty, so we had some submissions. Chilla, did you see what our buddy, uh, our buddy Matt uh, on on the Twitter, Matt Weller? Um, yes, uh, I did, I, I'm definitely interested in, in in this this concept. So it's the kind of a Microsoft Surface Hub on the cheap touchscreen coffee table. Mm-hmm. Um, did you put get enough words in that description there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and that's how it's yeah, that's how he described it, and that's actually how it is on the Instructables site. And pretty much what they're doing is they're taking a large 40-inch TV, um, putting a small case type or slim type computer underneath it. And and when you see these Intel sticks and like the Chrome bits and things of that nature, I'm envisioning this is going to get easy, even easier over time. Um, They're hooking that up into the TV and then they're taking a 10 point infrared touch screen overlay and putting it over the TV um, and then kind of building a table around it. You do get a piece of plexiglass that you have to mount that IR touch frame to um, so it does protect. Uh, when I first started reading this, I'm like, how are they actually protecting the front 
of the screen because I've seen some of those touchscreen overlays that are kind of like a a film that you put over the the glass or over the the panel. This they're actually kind of mounting it to to plexiglass that lets you kind of protect the TV. Um, I'm definitely interested in this. I'm not going to lie. I'm not 100% sure I would, I want to run Windows on it. I may want to run <laughs> something else. Well, what else would um, you run that's like all touchscreening and, and, and ready to go? Like, are you going to just have a giant Android tablet? No. I, I. You know what I would think about is actually instead of building it like a coffee table, building it kind of like a, a diner table off in the corner with a wraparound kind of seating and i'm actually thinking about raspberry pi running cody and some of the um emulators nice nice so, so i think that'd be i think that'd be kind of cool because mm-hmm. you could actually mount because you could actually mount kind of drawers underneath with controllers that you can kind of pull out i don't know i, I don't know I'm, I'm 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 this definitely has my interest peaked <laughs> And it's a DIY thing, so it's definitely something you can kind of alter as you go as well. Uh, so that's over at Instructables.com, the Microsoft Service Hub on the cheap touchscreen coffee table. Yeah, we, I mean, you really could put anything in there. And, and, and then it's the thing is, is what we're talking about the Service Hub. That was this is the thing that they were showing off at CES, although like for years, right, about having the yeah. giant coffee table. Uh, uh, surface, you know, uh, kind of situation, and really, you, you could do you could do that with just about anything. So I think it's worth the, the Surface Hub, and I actually got to play with two of them about a week ago. I should have sent a picture. Um, is definitely a little bit of a different animal. Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't run the standard Windows build that we're all used to, so it has some extra stuff on there that that makes it a little different and when you when you talking about the surface hub and the, i thought when i when i was going to get to see it i thought oh, well it's just going to be a big touchscreen windows device right it's going to be it's going to be a surface pro but 55 inches the the way they designed it it actually has um beam forming microphones with a high def camera um, and the high def camera kind of pans and it, it, it doesn't necessarily pan and scan. It actually uses the beamform mics to figure out where you are in the room and use a, uses motion. Mm-hmm. And then it will actually crop to you. So if you're getting up and you're walking around the camera, it, it's almost like what we looked at with um, the camera we were using for the pod crawl. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's kind of like that in the fact that it kind of zooms in and crops on you, the, but it's not the Mevo a real zoom. The Mevo camera for those those curious. yeah, the Mevo camera. It's kind of like that where when you're when you're doing that, it kind of zooms in on you using and it's using the uh, combination of motion and microphone telemetry to to figure out where you are in the room. The other thing that was a little different, and I thought was really cool, was it's all it's the TV's off. The camera's always motion sensing, so as soon as you walk into the room, it actually then comes on, hmm. and you have some default options where you don't even necessarily log into it. Um, it can be kind of a whiteboard, a video conference tool, um, or a remote display panel. Um, so I actually grabbed an Android phone and immediately um, used used kind of its its ability to Chromecast, for lack of a better word. Um, and, and that was all, as soon as it comes on, there's three options on the screen that you can kind of kick off an actual whiteboard session, the meeting, or, or, or cast another device up there. So it was pretty cool. Awesome. So, hey, I want to give a shout out because uh, you're talking about the, the escape rooms in the chat room over at live.awesomecast.net. Uh, Wheels down there in California, PA says there's an escape room near him. And Krause has never been to one. So uh, maybe that will be a team building exercise uh, that we can uh, we can schedule in the future as well. <laughs> so we're actually already talking about like, my family's even talking about as everyone comes in for the holidays, trying to to schedule one for, for the holidays. It's a nice, fun thing, and it's, and it's a year-round thing. It's not just a haunted house deal, you know. Okay. Uh, it, it's it's kind of cool that they can do um, that kind of thing. So uh, great, good, great to hear. 
thoughts? Oh, um, <laughs> I see in the chat. Uh, let's see. Uh, also, uh, Doug uh, shared with us. Uh, I saw this story kind of uh, flip by, uh, but Doug said this was really interesting. Uh, Google Flights will now help you uh, avoid sudden price increases. Uh, so this is actually not an app or anything like that, but this is actually going to be kind of built into Google. There's already a little bit of the like flight finder kind of thing going on, but it's actually going to tell you if, uh, hey, uh, this will be cheaper next week, or hey, this price is probably going to probably going to go up in a few days and stuff like that. My only issue is, and I, I don't think they've they've corrected this by now. Uh, I typically use Southwest, you know, Airbus of the sky, uh, and, uh, and, and Southwest last I know does not allow any of these services to graze their pricing information for these kinds of, uh, situations. Uh, so I, I, you know, I'm kind of a new flyer myself, so I don't know if I would experiment too deeply into this. But uh, still kind of interesting. Uh, Google is also updating its hotel search, according to this article at Mashable.com, with new uh, dot deals tab. No, new deals. Or I can't tell if the dot is inside or outside of the uh, parentheses. No, that's something on my screen. That's That was... Hold on, is it moving? Is, oh, the dot doesn't move. It's something on my screen. Okay, a deals tab that shows discounted rates as well as when there are lower uh, rates as part of the hotel's loyalty program. So there you go. There you go. That'll be really handy when I do some uh, traveling here at the beginning of 2017 for for work. So uh, uh, go keep an eye out for that. This is kind of rolling out right now. It's only on their on their uh, I think on their mobile platform, not an app by itself. Yeah, doesn't have its own app just yet, but just in the the Google Flights website in general. And it's it's a pretty interesting concept. And even if even if you're like Southwest isn't on here, it might be valuable to look. Mm-hmm. and see what the other airlines are doing. Not that you're going to probably switch airlines, but it may actually help you kind of figure out what when when the typical rate, rate hikes are and whatnot. Right, right. Chilla, can we talk about podcasting? Can we get super meta here? Sure. <laughs> so this... Uh, Hold on, I'm going to try and see if I can bring up bring it up so we can test this as we go. Um, yeah, here it is. Shortcut. So, American Life, or This American Life, or NPR, basically in general, uh, released this thing. They, they say that they want to make uh, sharing podcasts as easy as sharing GIFs, or as shareable as GIFs. GIFs? GIFs. Um... And to do this, they're basically any of their podcasts that you're going to go to on their website, and this works in mobile. He shows it off, and there's Ira, you know, uh, wonderfully showing off uh, in Ira Glass kind of way how this works. Basically, anytime where you're listening to a podcast on their website, I want to clarify, on their website, you can't do this on iTunes, you can't do this anywhere else. Of course, their platform, their website, they can do this there, Okay. But what happens is you have a little shortcut button, and then it's like kind of in a beta kind of status. It's a web app. You go in. You, there's an entire transcript of the program. Makes sense, right? I mean, it's a news program. They're gonna they have the resources. They're doing this anyways, right? They're freaking NPR. Uh, and what it'll do is you can go in, select the piece of the show you're listening to, or it'll automatically be where you're listening to it, right? Highlight the portion of the script that you want to share. And what I'll create is this little kind of like Instagram-ish video thing with the words on the screen along with along with the podcast, along with the audio. And now you have a little clip that you can share uh, immediately to social media options or download to your, your phone or computer and share it anywhere you would like there. And of course, everything's tagged with this American Life and NPR and all that kind of stuff too. I think this is so really is it, interesting. Is it, so when you when you do that, is it is it creating a is it doing a GIF with subtitles? No, or no, no. It, it, it's 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 actually a video. It, it, in, in there, it is a video. They, okay. they say they want to make it shareable as GIFs, as in this is a thing that you can upload and get shared onto its thing. There's a lot. No, of but this stuff. is super nice because I feel like it all it, it allows people to quickly find something that they might be interested in or post something that they might be interested in with, without having to kind of link to Mm -hmm. a full blown video. It's a really cool concept. I'll be, I'll be very, I'll be extremely surprised 
if other hosting services don't start to kind of have this capability in even YouTube per se, I yeah. would guess that so, they're, so they're looking at something like big, this because this, is a, this there, is a really good idea. There's a big component in here. Is they've already transcribed this, right? And and plus mm-hmm. the resources that implement something like this, I mean, they're big enough they can put the money into it. They built, and they said there was nothing out there like this. We've been looking for it, and, and we decided, well, maybe we can build it ourselves, and they built it internally, and, and here it is. Here, I'm, I'm actually going to go through. This is my first time messing with this, I, but I watched the tutorial by Ira Glass, so I feel like I know exactly what I'm doing. I'm on, I'm on thisamericanlife.org. Uh, let's see, episode 502, this this call may be recorded. And uh, I have the audio playing here, and there's a little cut this with the little scissors. And again, just it's just scissors if you're on the mobile version as well. That's what impresses me, that this works on the mobile version too. In a browser, not an app. This is not an app. This is a web app. So we're going, to, we're going to cut this, and hopefully I don't have any problems because I know this is an older version of Chrome on here. It says it's loading the episode. It's a little slower computer, too. And, uh, yeah, we have a little bit of the... <laughs> this isn't great because there's speaking Tigerinia, ty, 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 uh, some other language. But in general, I should be able to grab a little bit right here of exactly what that is. And then it takes a little clip, and you can actually adjust this, just like when you're editing any kind of audio or video of exactly what you want out of there. And yeah, it's going to go in and do kind of a karaoke to uh, what's going in here. And I can pick my colors and let's make that, uh, you know, kind of the black colors going in there. We'll hit next. It's making your video. And I feel like I'm doing exactly the iron glass thing. Um, Making my video, making my video, making my video. This could take a bit. And and again, they're loading on their their side. They're, They're generating a video file at this point. And you can uh, type in a little bit of a tweet, send it out to Twitter, send it out to Facebook, or download it to your computer. And it actually uh, comes down, looks like as an MP4. And now I completely have that video ready to go to do whatever I want with it. And notice there's a clip by listener, um, and they have a little shortcut to, what's it, tal.fm slash shortcut, so you can find out what this is. And, yep, there it is. Opened up in my VLC player, and it's a video ready to go. You can put that on Twitter. You can put that anywhere. You can put it on Instagram. That's great. That's awesome. That is awesome. That, that, that's cool. Like, I want that feature for my thing, but I definitely don't have the resources, let alone, like, transcripting these shows that are just, you know, the, these are news programs. These are scripted news programs, uh, you know, to, to a certain point, of course, you know, aside from the interviews, but even those are, are going to be written out at some point. So they're already in process of that kind of thing, right? Versus we kind of have a chatter program and, and we need somebody to sit down and do that kind of thing, right? We actually, actually, for one of my clients, we do transcribe their podcasts and put them on, on a website. So if something like this were available, man, maybe, maybe this is something they'll kind of outsource. That'd be nice. Yeah, offer it as a platform or, or like I said, I, I can't imagine that they're going to be the only ones to have this technology. No, definitely. Or, or some something like that. Or, or maybe there, there's probably going to be lots of pretenders after something like this, especially somebody as big as this. If you start seeing these around, I don't listen to this kind of podcast, right? But, uh, mm-hmm. but, but I, I wish I did now. So I could find things and share them like this. I mean, how many times am I listening to a wrestling podcast, a This Week in Tech podcast? I wish they had this technology, to be quite honest. But I don't think any of them have the resources to do it. As it is, Twit doesn't actually do their own apps. It, it's users that do it. I'm able to get Twit everywhere because they have such a great fan base. You know, I mean, it, it's, uh, and, 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 you know, all these other ones aren't going to have that. Unless they link in with something as big as, uh, as an NPR. So... Very interesting. Very interesting play by these guys. I, I initially, when I was first getting uh, reading about it, I said this is kind of like Clamor, how they were doing like shorter, shorter bits. But it's actually far more than that. So um, I'm very interested to see what they do with this. So. Chilla, what's interesting you for the week? Um, let's hit up the digital photo frame 2.0. All right. So I thought this was pretty. This is pretty cool. It was an article I saw. It was called. It's called Joy Unveils, an interactive photo album. I'm like, oh, okay. It's it's just going to be another kind of photo frame that's going to let you 
it's either going to play a slideshow. I can I can do this with my iPad, right? I can create a create a an album and and hit the button and it'll just flick through it. Where I think they kind of created a pretty cool product here is um, not only can you can you use this with your photos, you can actually grab photos from Facebook. You can grab photos from Instagram. Um, you can, it, it'll, it, it works with JPEG, PNG, TIFF, um, raw photos. It works with 360 degree photos, which actually caught my interest Ooh. as well. Um, it will integrate with things like Google photos as well as Dropbox. Um, every customer gets 10 gig of storage, which I thought was pretty neat. The thing that I thought was even cooler was um, you can do a FaceTime like chat and narrate the photos and videos and kind of share them with someone else. So I thought that was really neat. So if you kind of created a photo album and you pulled in all this content and you wanted to call up grandma and, and kind of walk through it, you can. So I, I thought that this was a really neat concept. And while a lot of us will say, oh, I could do this with my tablet and it wouldn't be that big of a deal. Um, to me, this looks like it's definitely not marketed at the tech person, right? It's marketed at the, I want something easy to do with this to, to, to leverage. I don't want to have to show grandma or anybody anything. It kind of can sit like a book on a, I think it looks, they had, they have a dock for it. Um, the build quality looks pretty cool. Um, I just think it's an all around neat project or product that definitely solves an issue without having to kind of build your own and roll your own uh, photo album. And I, I think it, it's interesting too, because you can, we actually print a photo album every year and it's kind of like a year in review for, for us. And it's something we want to give Christopher one day. To me, this takes the pain, grief and agony out of using something like Snapfish and, and layout and design tools to then try to take your photos and, and kind of integrate them and then pay for it, wait for something to be printed. Um, the only thing that would worry me about this is if they don't keep it going, it does run off of their cloud. Um, so it doesn't have any local storage. So if this company goes out, I, I worry that, okay, what happens to all of your, your photo album? So this is definitely something that people are going to, that they're going to have to keep this going. Certainly. I have a problem with it's a 500 or yeah, $500 price point tablet when again, I feel like an iPad, like a comparable iPad would be fine. I mean, I know. Have you ever printed a photo album? <laughs> no, no, no. But still like, I, again, I feel like, I feel like that can, like a lot of this can happen on there. And uh, I agree. But I guess I, from the, from the photo album perspective and, and why I'm bringing it up is, I mean, we end up looking around for, you know, try to find a percentage off coupon or, or wait for an email with a, with a coupon. And then we're, it's usually a little under a hundred bucks for a minimal amount of pages. Mm -hmm. So at this rate, I, I'm, I think if you, if you started to look at your Snapfish and you're even going up to the Kodak machine up at the local Walgreens, think if you if you looked at what you want to do and then start to confine yourself based on the price of the physical photo album and how many times you'd like to do it per year versus how many times you can afford to do it per year i don't, I don't think their price is far off okay okay and, but then again i guess having a una una task of sorts kind of device kind of makes sense yeah, right well, i like the fact that you could leave it out mm-hmm and it's not like you had to, to leave your iPad behind to keep kind of a photo wall going somewhere. Mm -hmm. hmm. so, that, so that's definitely where I see this kind of like the interactive photo frame that but can also link in. And I really like that they talk about it being a very flipboard like experience. And I do like that user interface. So I, I, th I think it's really a really interesting concept. Interesting. Interesting. Tell me about solar panels for Airbnb. 
So I actually got to see, there's actually a house um, probably about three blocks away from me mm-hmm. that is actually is all solar paneled and solar city did their work. So I've actually been researching solar panels and it's something I'm actually thinking about putting on our house. The last, um, last I knew I'm not going to be able to put it on my house cause it's too old and we'd have to like reinforce the structure. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, I want will, to. Th- and talking to the guy, they, they, I think sometimes they'll help with some of that cost, mm-hmm. but I, uh, uh, it's something I'm, I'm interested in them looking at, but this this caught my interest. So, Solar City is going to give Airbnb users a rebate on solar panels, and if you call now, um, you can get a thousand dollars back for signing up. Um, I I think this is a great way to get more people involved with the, with the solar panels. And talking to the guy up the street, and and Solar City was actually there when when Dormont was doing their house tour. Um, you know, the, the lifespan of the, of the panel is a lot longer, or much longer now. The, the, the need for direct sunlight isn't necessarily a requirement. He was telling me, you know, we can get we can get enough power off the panel under a foot of snow. Um, wow. But I think it's pretty cool that they're but they're partnering up with Airbnb. And, and it, it, what kind of got them started was is they, they found out that that um, private residents and um the more cutting edge hotels were a lot greener and interested in being green and that the, the guests were more interested in, in a specific site. If it was a greener type site, if you look at the kind of like the tiny house movement, I think this kind of goes along with that, but giving, giving the guests and hosts a thousand dollar rebate to, to load up the home, with solar panels, I thought was pretty darn cool. Now this is a limited time offer. They are going to drop that rate um, in April of next year, April 2017 to 750. And then it's going to kind of going to move down as it goes from there. And then um, existing solar, solar city customers who become Airbnb hosts get an additional hundred dollar coupon for the service. Um, so I thought that was, I thought it was pretty cool. Um, obviously, Tesla and, and Solar City are, are, are they announced their merger, um, and then I I heard I think this week there was there was talks about uh, working closely or some kind of agreement with Panasonic as well. Um, so so very cool if you're in the Dormont area and you go on to Biltmore Avenue. Um, it's the the house there on Biltmore that has they actually have a sign in their yard that they're part of some kind of solar house tour, um, and they have the solar panels up on their roof. Pay close attention because it's actually extremely hard to see them. Mm-hmm. Um, but I thought it was a pretty cool pretty cool option, and, and kind of getting that reback, rebate was pretty nice. As, as an Airbnb customer, would it would it make you think about oh I'll, I'll pick this place over that place because it has solar panels just so I can see them. Uh, maybe, maybe not so much that, but, um, I, I am interested as an Airbnb user, cause it looks like I, like I say, I'm also apparently, um, able to get something out of it. Uh, it, it, it's, I'm curious about how much it is to begin with. Uh, I, I kind of worry about what that price tag w- would be, but you can just get a free quote so I can find out what, and, <laughs> Uh, but, uh, yeah, no, I, I, I think that's cool that, that it is reaching out and, and solar city, I, I'm seeing them a lot of places in the city. There's definitely a presence here. Uh, so, and, and with everything else technology that's going on in this town, it's kind of makes sense. Um, I, I'm glad to see that it isn't, you know, we can get something out of it, you know, uh, you know, here in, in this climate, I guess. Right. Um, mm-hmm. so yeah, anything that makes that a little easier and how, I mean, I, I, I'm really curious because because I, I, there was something else that because I think there was an ad on Facebook that said about like you know pretty much pretty much getting them installed for free, and and that's one of the offers that I that I kind of heard from them was is that depending on how you work it, you can actually get a free, you can get it actually totally free installation, mm-hmm. um, one and they're they're actually pumping, um back onto to the grid and then you're actually buying your energy back right. from them. Okay. Okay. So, 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 so if you, it works out well, but again, what is that upfront cost to, to get something going mm-hmm. like that? So 
And it could be something if they're like, well, we know we're going to make money back. But we'll, we'll just front it, you know, because really, really in the end, maybe maybe they just get a percentage of whatever we pump back. And then that, mm-hmm. that's how they make their money. So if that's the case and that means I don't pay into electric like I do now. Hell yeah. Why not? I, I have a feeling what they're doing, and, and I'm just going to make up numbers here, and they're going to be around what the guy said, but just for round numbers in our conversation. If you spend $0.10 cents per kilowatt hour, um, they actually charge you 2 and a half or, or $0.03 cents per kilowatt hour, but they're getting paid by the power company for generating the, the kilowatt hour at the, at the $0.10 cent mark. Mm-hmm. So they're making seven cents out of every kilowatt hour that the the things actually they're making the yeah they're making the ten cents and then they're actually charging you three to get that power back. So um, they're making to me they're making money on the front end off the power company and then making double dipping to a point, mm-hmm. but it, it's still a but if it's something that's still sixty six percent savings for you <laughs> yeah yeah so, so it kind of works out, out out in the end now i just need to, to attach my 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 winter heating solution to that to get off gas because holy crap mm-hmm. <laughs> so there you go well on that note i think it's an awesome environmental thing to end off the show uh real quick headlines that we did not get to uh pokemon go i have not been traveling as much and be able to pull up my pokemon go lately but apparently uh casual pokemon go trainers now have a fighting chance. They added a lot of stuff. Uh, so there's a lot of new drops when you pick up a Pokemon as far as items. Um, I some new abilities for you to get into gyms and be able to actually compete. If you're newer and don't and, and are, are scoffing at the 2,500 Snorlax that's hanging out at the top of that thing. Amazon launched a standalone music streaming service. I'm kind of curious to see how that plays. I mean, Amazon has a lot of, has a lot of fingers and a lot of pies at this point. And, and we'll see we'll see what yet another music service does uh a lot of talk this week about twitter is it the end for them uh the wired article that we have in the notes says twitter's woes signal the end of the social wars man i hope it doesn't go away but apparently it's unbuyable at this point is is what they're saying uh you can't take so where no will people where do you think people will end up we're on facebook already right <laughs> I mean, yeah, hell, we're streaming video uh, here. I know, I know. It's it's still there's there's problems with that. Like it, like like Twitter is still like the place where X, Y, and Z happens during a live event. And how do you replace that? I don't know yet. I don't I don't know yet. Or maybe this is it. This this uh, Facebook live streaming that we do. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Uh. So yeah, there you go. Uh. I, Chilla, I know there's like that surprise Microsoft event. I think there's supposedly a, a, an Apple event coming up. Yeah, they're they're saying yeah, next week could be a big week. Uh, Apple potential Apple, definitely Microsoft, um, and then don't forget as a, a public service announcement: if you have a Galaxy Note Seven, it is a federal offense to carry that device on a plane. Um, Samsung's actually been popping up in some airports to do on the fly uh, device swaps. Um, and anyone who does have one should be returning it to their carrier. Should you have bought it from Samsung, please do contact them and get that device returned. Certainly, please. Yeah, it's 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 a safety concern at this point. It's too much. Uh, eh, way to go, Samsung! <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> Yikes! Uh, but anyways, um, on that note, thank you so much, Chilla John Chilla at Chilla on the Twitter. ChillaTech.net is the site. John Chilla on Facebook and Chilla five seven nine on the Instagram. Come find me. Mm, if you are in the area, uh, intro to blogging by Amanda Narcissi of Bold Pittsburgh, boldpgh.com. We'll be at the Carnegie Library in Beachview uh, Wednesday night at uh, at about six p.m. Check out podcamppittsburgh.com for details on that. And next week is the evening with Podcamp, the Foodie Edition. We're gonna have a lot of really cool foodie people on there on that panel. And uh, that also is uh, expected to be streamed live, uh, probably on Facebook. We'll probably keep going with the Facebook thing, to be quite honest. So so keep an eye out for that as well. And I think uh, we did announce Sorgatron Media. No, we did not announce it. I scheduled it, but I don't think I told anything to anybody about it yet. So keep an eye out for Sorgatron Media Coffee. I think we're doing that the Sunday before Thanksgiving. Oh, that's perfect. The chill is coming. So there you go. 
Uh, <laughs> so let me know when pizza the 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 the, the pizza with the, the with pizza Sorgatron. gathering pizza with Sorgatron. <laughs> Is that what I should call it? <laughs> sure. Why you could have the, the the pizza, the coffee. You could do an ice cream social. Mm-hmm. Hey, nice. And these e- can all lead into another foodie edition. I just noticed it's covered by the title, but nice e Walking Dead uh, t shirt over there oh, on on the feed. Thanks. I haven't seen mine for a while. I don't know where I went. So I've I been mean, I've been I've been I've been real close to picking up the WWE loot crate that they're starting. Like, oh, should well, I? Then, uh, Wizard World Pittsburgh is November fourth. Yeah. If you're interested in getting tickets? Check out wizardworld.com. Or check out Groupon. This I know week. some of the mayhem people will be there. Uh, I will not be making it this year. I Comic have book pit will be there. I will have jobs in Hermitage and Clearfield that weekend. Ooh. I will be traveling and not to the good places. <laughs> uh, so there you go. Um, yeah, check out everything awesomecast.net, live.awesomecast.net every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. Thank you so much to our awesome chatters today, Wheels and Crazy Krause. Anybody else that popped in the stream? James Buckley, what's up? I saw you over on Facebook for a bit, and everybody else that liked it and shared it as well. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you to our awesome audience. You've been our awesome audience. Wait, thank you to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome Have an week. awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.